Hello, Wednesday night church, Victory World Outreach. Thank you for joining us tonight. God's going to do something incredible tonight. I dare you to lift your hands tonight. Amen. I dare you to worship with us and just join in. Amen. And just see what God and the Holy Spirit does in your heart tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Here I am. Here I am. Myself one thing, how can I do anything but praise? I praise you, you are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for. You are King of everything, I want my life to praise you. You are God, you are Lord, you are all. Of everything, I want my life to praise you. Here I am, I've come to thank you. Hallelujah. Here I am, my life you changed. Cause you gave your life. Cause you gave your life for me. You crucified your son for me. How can I do anything? But praise, I praise you. You are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for. You are King of everything, want my life to praise you. You are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for. You are King of everything. I want my life to praise you. Oh, here I am. Here I am. I've come to thank you. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Here I am. A life you changed. Because you gave your life. Because you gave your life for me. You crucified your son for me. How can I do anything but praise? I pray you, you are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for. You are King of everything, I want my life to praise you. You are God, you are Lord, you are all I'm living for. You are King of everything, I want my life to praise you. I want my life to praise you. Hallelujah. I want my life to praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we want to praise you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, and hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you, we long for you, when we see you, when we see you, we find strength to face the day, in your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. Oh, we turn to you. We turn to you. In your kingdom, Jesus. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. Oh, 
you make us new. You make us new when we see you. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. Jesus, in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Say Hosanna. 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 You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praise. Sing Hosanna. 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 Come out of your way, my God. Welcome you here, Lord. Sing again, Hosanna. Oh, yes. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. Sing it one more time, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship God tonight, amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. We welcome you here tonight, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Who am I? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for who the Son and who the Son sets free. Oh, he's free and I'm a child of God, yes I am, in my Father's house, there's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am, I'm free at last. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son? Who the Son sets free. Oh, he's free and I'm a child of God. Yes, I Hey guys, it's good to have you with us tonight. We're going to take time and give opportunity to give in our tithes and our offerings. And I want to just talk a little bit about faith, putting our trust in God. God's a big God. God's able to meet your need, to meet you where you're at. It says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7 that we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, what we have in the supernatural supersedes what takes place in the natural. In other words, God's bigger than anything that we see, anything we deal with in the natural. And I truly believe that. The problem that we have is that when we operate in the natural, we want to come up with a natural solution. And so it's easy to operate in the five senses and what we see, what we smell, what we taste, what we hear, and what we touch. Those are all wonderful things, but the problem is, is that many times the devil will distort reality and then we operate in the flesh and he does that to destroy our faith. All I want to say today is that we can put our faith and our trust in God. We don't have to walk by what we see, live by what we see, but we can actually put our faith in a God that's bigger than any problem that we face. We need God 
in every area of our life, but especially in our finances. And I want you to know that wherever you're at, in your home, whatever financial situation that you're facing, whether it be a job or trying to pay bills, whatever financial needs you have, you can put your faith in God. It's all through the Bible that God is faithful. Trust God today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, God. Lord, that you see every home, every family, and every need. We ask your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us on our Wednesday night service. We're so excited to have you. And I wanna bring a message to you this evening uh, that talks about adventure awaits. Adventure awaits, because as you know, a life with God really is an adventure. There's so many things that God has for us, ahead of us that are so good, and uh, we ought to be excited to see what God has. But the reason that this is such an important message is I know that right now many of you are facing things that probably don't feel like a good adventure. You know, I, I'm a parent of young children, so of course we're dealing with, with school being completely different. Many of you, you might be facing homeschooling and doing a full-time job, raising a family, working in ministry, hopefully at the church, and there's a lot going on. And uh, there can be a lot of times when we don't want to kind of opt into what God has for us. And so I wanna bring a message that I hope really encourages you and makes you want to, to, to get excited about what God is doing. So, because you know, God has plenty that he can do with us and that he can do through our lives, uh, but we do some things that can hinder, we can actually hinder what God wants to do. And I wanna go over a couple of those things so that you can look out for those and know what to avoid because we don't wanna hinder what God has and uh, the first thing that we do that really hinders what God has for us is very simple. We just have inactivity in our lives. We don't do what God calls us to do, whether we know what God has for us or not. Sometimes we just kind of sit on the sidelines and we don't do it. And uh, that's why I have this snowboard right here. This, this is my snowboard. Uh, I go every once in a while with my brother-in-law, Evan, and we go snowboarding. And uh, one thing that I have discovered that I think is very interesting is when we go snowboarding, we use an app to track our speed. We like to know how fast we go. And the fastest I've been able to go is 40 miles an hour. That's really fast for being on a snowboard. And, uh, but when we're going that fast and we're, you know, you're flying down the mountain, there's things zipping past you. You're looking out for skiers and snowboarders. The amazing thing is I don't fall very often. Most of the time I get down the mountain without falling. Uh, and Evan can tell you when we're in line, waiting for the lift, or when we're, we're standing and figuring out where we want to go, or even if I'm trying to get off of the lift, which is really slow, uh, that's when I tend to fall. And you might think that doesn't make any sense. You know, of course, when you think about falling on a snowboard, you probably, or a skateboard, you probably think of these massive injuries, but actually I tend to fall more when I'm not doing anything, when I'm just standing there. And uh, you know, the, I believe the reason for that is when you're going super fast on a snowboard, your adrenaline's pumping, you're thinking about all the things that are, that are going on surrounding you, and so you're more focused. You're more attentive to what's going on because you're, you have a destination, you're going somewhere, and I'm trying not to break my neck, of course, but when I'm standing still and we're not doing something, that's when it's easier to fall. And I believe the same is true of our walk with Jesus Christ, is that when, we are, uh, when we're doing something for God and we have a purpose and a direction that our life is going, uh, we tend to focus and we're, you know, of course, if you're living for God, you're watching what you're doing. You're making sure that you're not, uh, we're, we're not getting into sin. We're, make, we're watching what we watch. We're watching the things that we allow into our lives. But when we get to a place that we're still, 
we get to a place where we're not moving, we tend to get comfortable and we start uh, not paying so much attention to our surroundings. And that's a great place for the devil to come and attack. You've heard the phrase that uh, idle hands are the devil's playground. And that's so true is that inactivity for a Christian is a dangerous thing. And we can go into all the things that, that we can be doing. You know, there's a scripture um, in Ephesians chapter four and verse 15, it says, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. So that's what we're doing. That's the area that we cannot afford to be inactive is we are speaking the truth in love. Hopefully you're reaching out to the people around you. You're, you're trying to witness, you're inviting people to church. And it goes on to say that uh, to be more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Now, I want to just take a second and focus on that part, that God is the head. We know that God is the head. And the Bible says that you and I are the body. Now, of course, think about your head for a second. Think about your brain. This is where your vision comes from. This is where you come up with ideas, where you come up with inspiring things and, and uh, you begin to dream in your head. But what happens is your body has to go and move with that dream. Think about some ideas that maybe you've had. There's, there's, I'm sure been times you're getting ready to go to bed and you're thinking about the next day and you're thinking, I'm gonna get up early. I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna read my Bible. I'm gonna cook a good, healthy breakfast. You know, all these things and we make these great plans. And then you come to a place where uh, it's time to get up and the alarm sounds and guess what? There were a lot of good ideas in your head, but the body doesn't follow, does it? And I'm guilty of it as well. And, and we hit that snooze button. And so, you know, in the same way, we know that God is the head. God is where we get the vision from, where we get our inspiration from. We say, God, what is it that you want me to do? Uh, but ultimately, the head needs the body to be in line with those visions. And so that's why we cannot afford to be inactive. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 26, verse 41, it says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation watch and pray. That means we're not inactive. We're watching, you know, just like when I'm going 40 miles an hour on my snowboard, I'm watching, I'm making sure I'm not going to be in a dangerous situation. Watch and pray because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And you guys can all think of an example. I'm sure of a time that that's, that's been the case for us is our spirit is willing. Our head is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, God is willing to use you. I want you to know, but our flesh tends to be weak and we cannot afford to be inactive. Another thing that happens, maybe we get to a, to Sunday morning, it's time to go to church. And, you know, we know it's a good thing to go to church, but the head, the head thinks that, but then does our body go? Or we think, okay, I got to get my kids settled down. I got to log on for uh, a Wednesday night service. It's a good thing in our heads, but does the body follow? And thankfully tonight you followed but we cannot afford to be inactive. That's the first hindrance that we often bring to what God wants to do in our lives. The second thing I wanna talk about, and we are all guilty of this, and I'm gonna show you an example of making excuses. I know I can speak for myself. Sometimes I make so many excuses of why I can't do certain things, why I can't do what God wants me to do, why I'm not equipped or I'm not able to do what God has. You know, if you look in Exodus chapters three and four, uh, God calls Moses to go. He says, I want you to go and set my people free from slavery in Egypt. I want you to go and do this amazing thing. It's an amazing thing that God calls on Moses to do. But you have to understand where Moses is in this moment when he's being called. You know, Moses has just murdered somebody and he runs off into the wilderness. You know, talk about social distancing. Moses is socially distant. He runs and he's just, he decides, I'm just going to live uh, uh, you know, fleeing the law. I'm basically just going to live in off away from society. But here God comes and he finds him right where he is. And he calls on Moses to go back to that very place where he killed that guy, that same area. And he wants him to stand up to Pharaoh, who is one of the most powerful people in the world. That's a scary calling if you really think about it. And um, so again, in Exodus three and four, Moses began to do what many of us do, and he is arguing with God. And you can read about it, um, you know, in, 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 uh, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, he says, Who am I that I should go? 
God, who am I? How many times have you and I, just think for a second, how many times God has called you to do something. He may not be calling you to do such a big grand thing. He might be saying, go talk to that person. Go speak to that, uh, that family member who's not saved. Go give a track to somebody. And how many times do we say, God, who am I? We begin to look at our past. And of course the devil's so good at drudging up our past failures and, and making us feel like we're not worthy. But to the point where we just decide, just like Moses, I'm just gonna live, I'm gonna live my life and, and I'm just kind of settled with not doing anything. And Moses argues with God. Then in, in uh, Exodus 4.1, he says, but suppose they won't believe me. Suppose they won't listen to my voice. Here he's being called by God, but he's thinking, you know, what if they, what if they mock me? What if they get angry at me? And many of us have experienced that same fear. He goes on in Exodus 4.10, he says, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. I'm slow of speech. How many times have you and I thought that? I can tell you, those of us who preach, if you've ever witnessed, if you've ever done something like that, every one of us have had that thought. I have that thought as I was getting this message ready. I'm slow of speech. I'm not eloquent. And we think, you know, I, I can't put the words together that are going to be effective enough to witness to somebody. And again, we hinder what God wants to do. Exodus 4.13, Moses even goes so far as to ask for God to send someone else. Now to me, to think of God wanting to do something in my life and asking him, nah, call somebody else, that's a scary thought. But we can get to that place because we argue with God. And so what, what I think is so amazing about God and what I hope really sinks into your heart about God tonight is that as many times as we do what Moses did and we argue with God or we begin to rationalize in ourselves why we can't do his will or why we can't be effective, God does not allow us to argue our way out of it. And so he, uh, he showed Moses that he was going to use him and that he was able to do whatever he wanted to do in Moses' life. Exodus 3.12, God says, I will certainly be with you, Moses. Exodus 3.17, he says, and you will take this rod in your hand and you will do signs and wonders. And then in Exodus 3.15, he tells him, I will be, my words will be in your mouth and I will send Aaron, your brother, to speak. It's kind of funny if you think about it that here Moses is bringing argument after argument and yet God is, is answering each one of those things and saying, nope, I'm going to be with you here. Nope, I'm going to send your brother Moses to speak for you. He wouldn't let Moses opt out. I want to tell you that's the mercy of God. Is To us, we're thinking we can't do it and, and many times we're not thinking about the fact that we are denying God from doing what He wants to do in our lives. We need to be reminded it's an adventure. What God has for us, think about what Moses was able to see. He saw the Red Sea parted. The Bible says they were led by clouds of fire. We're talking about amazing things that Moses might have missed on. If we're not careful, we can argue with God. We can push God away enough that we miss the amazing things that He has for us. So the final thing that I want to say as, as I close this message, you know, is that, that we do to hinder God is that we tend to look at things. We tend to look at possibilities through our own eyes rather than through God's eyes. You know, doesn't matter that God created the universe. Doesn't matter that we know He is all-knowing and all-powerful and that He has a plan. And yet we tend to think of things through what we can do. We tend to look at the possibilities through our own strategy and through our own strength instead of understanding that God is in it. Don't think for one second with everything that's going on in the world around you right now that God is surprised or that God's been, uh, been put, put aback by what's going on. Everything that's happening, it's in God's plan. God knows exactly what's happening and exactly the part that you have to play in this, in this life. You know, we need to look at the possibilities of what God can do through His eyes. You know, I'm struck that many times when, when Jesus was walking the earth, the Bible says that there would be crowds of people coming to Him. You think about, He's doing miracles. He's multiplying fish and bread. They're seeing people uh, raised from the dead. Amazing things. And so the crowds begin to throng Jesus and His disciples. And many times, the disciples would, would tell Him, go away. There's nothing we can do for you. Or they'd say, how are we supposed to meet the need for these people? Because they were looking at things, at the possibilities through what they could do. And of course, you and I can't do really anything on our own. We've seen that. We can look at the world around us and know there's nothing we can do outside of Jesus. But the Bible says that when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. 
That scripture moves my heart because I want to see things through the eyes of Jesus Christ. And when he looks at you, when he looks at your situation right now, whatever it may be, he looks at you with compassion and he looks at everybody with compassion. You know, we need to look at the possibilities as being bigger than what we see in front of us. Maybe what's in front of you right now and, and all you can envision is I got to somehow homeschool my kid or I have to get them to school. I have to make sure that I'm working and paying my bills. We're getting ready to come up into colder weather. What's going to happen with, with all these things? Whatever situation is in front of you, we have to be able to see things through the eyes of God. You know, I found a really good illustration that I want to share with you. A bar of iron costs about $5. Made into horseshoes, iron is worth about $12. If you make it into needles, it's worth $3,500. And if you make it into balance springs for an expensive watch, it can be worth $300,000. All these different things are, come from this one bar of iron. And I, I really hope that that speaks to you because what we can do in our own power may not seem like it's worth very much. But I want to tell you, when we understand adventure awaits, when we understand that our hands are our lives uh, given to God and put into the hands of God, when we say, God, whatever it is that you want from me, I don't feel worthy. I don't know that I'm equipped. God, who, like Moses said, who am I that you would use me? But if we are willing to put our hands into the, our lives into the hands of God, and say whatever you want to do, no matter how meaningless it may seem to me, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. It's, the possibilities are endless. And we begin to multiply ourselves. We begin to multiply what God is doing in our lives. When you share the gospel with somebody, you say, this is the gospel that changed my life. And you share that with somebody. That multiplies the gospel in other people's lives. You know, the, the fact of the matter is that we need to see things through God's eyes. And it's a dangerous thing when we hinder God, when we argue with God, or when we decide we're just going to be inactive. And in Matthew 23, 37, there's a scripture that talks about this. And I, I'll close here. This is God speaking about Jerusalem. He says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And here, you know, this is the city of Jerusalem. This is where the religious hierarchy was. This is where the, the temple was. This should have been and could have been the epicenter of what God was doing, what Jesus was doing when he walked this earth. And yet he's saying, how often I wanted to gather you to myself. How often I wanted to bless you. It says, but you wouldn't let me. That phrase at the end, you wouldn't let me, you know, that shows that it has to do with our willingness. Are you willing to let God gather you to himself? I don't know about you, but when I read that scripture and I think about my life, God forbid that it's ever said about me, you know, I wanted to do something amazing with you. There were people that I had uh, ready to, to hear the gospel from you, but because of my unwillingness or because I made excuses, I wasn't able to fulfill that. God forbid. And God forbid that for you. And so I encourage you, you know, as I get ready to close this message, we can make excuses. We can be inactive. We can say, I'm, I don't, I'm not worthy or my past uh, disqualifies me. But I want to tell you, isn't God more powerful than that? Don't you believe that God can do what he wants to do with your life? If he can, he can do it with me, he can do it with you or, or with anybody. The fact is, when we refuse to take action, we're looking at things for ourselves. We're looking to please ourselves. You know, we're getting ready to start small groups. I'll put a plug in for small groups here in just a few weeks. Many people might think, well, what, what good is it going to do for me to join a small group? It, you know, it doesn't affect anything. It doesn't really help anything. What, what good is that? Are we looking at things through our eyes or are we looking at the possibilities of what God can do? What people you might be able to encourage that you would have never thought possible just by being there. You know, when the devil's attacking, think about when the devil's attacking you in the middle of the week and you're, you know, all hell is breaking loose in your life and in your family, in your mind, to be able to have a group of people and say, I can lean on these Christian brothers and sisters. You know, looking at things through the eyes of God, the compassion for people that God has. I want to encourage you to understand there is an adventure ahead. 
the, the coronavirus, all the things that are going on, all the fear, all the panicking of the unknown, I want to tell you what there really is, is there is an adventure and there is a life beyond where we live beyond ourselves because we've given our hearts to Jesus Christ and our destinies then belong to God. So I want to encourage you tonight, as, as I bring this to a close, we're going to pray a prayer. I want you to just take a minute and think to yourself, because the very first thing that God wants us to do is to give our lives to Him, to have a relationship with Him where we belong to Him, where we're willing to do what He wants us to do, despite what we think our past uh, disqualifies us from doing. Maybe you haven't accepted Jesus into your life, or you've been doing some things in your life that you know are not pleasing to God, and you'd say, you know what, I don't want to be inactive. I don't want to argue with God. I don't want to push aside what God is doing, but I want to please Him with my whole heart. We're going to pray that prayer of salvation. I also want to encourage you. Maybe you are saved and, and you just haven't gotten in there yet. You haven't gotten in the fight. You haven't, you've been inactive for whatever reason, or you've, you've pushed that aside, but you say right now, I want to get in to what God wants to do. We're going to pray right now. I want to encourage you wherever you're at, if you would just take a moment quiet, quiet what's going on around you, bow your heads and close your eyes. Just repeat this prayer with me. Just say, Dear Jesus, I give you my heart right now. I recognize that I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. Please forgive me. Wash me clean of all my sins. Make me a new creation and open my eyes to the possibilities that you have for working in my life. Every day forward from now, help me to live out your purpose in my life. I surrender to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer, there is adventure that's awaiting you. I encourage you, seek God every day. Say, God, what is it that you would have me to do? And look for opportunities around you. There are people who need Jesus, people who are looking for an answer right now. I want to encourage you uh, to remember that we have service this week, this Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. We're going to be in the building. If you come at 11 a.m., we have Victory Kids for all the ages uh, of kids that are in Victory Kids. So make sure you look that up on our website at victoryworldoutreach.com. We hope to see you this Sunday. God bless you.